Of course, at the moment, we have a list of our products, we are showing the quantity, but there's no way for us to easily update the quantity. We can add more items, that's fine, but we can't reduce or delete items, uh, which is a bit of a problem. So we're gonna create a little form in here, which is gonna allow us to select from a drop down the quantity we want or remove the item altogether. So let's start out by taking a look at our controller and what we need to do here. So let's close everything off just to keep everything nice and tidy. And we will head over to our cart controller. Now we have an add method, but what we need to do is create an update method responsible for updating the quantity uh, and everything else we need to do. So let's create our update method. This will pass in a slug. Now we're not gonna pass in a quantity here because this will be a form that posts a value through to this route. Uh, but we do need our request just here and we need our response just here as well. And we will need our router as well so we can redirect. In actual fact, do we have this up here? No, we, we pulled these in here, so that's fine. So we inject these in. And now we need to do pretty much what we did here by checking if the product exists. You can extract these out to methods if you want within this class, uh, but I'll just duplicate this down just for now. So now that we've got this in here, let's just kill and say update, just so we can focus on the form. And then we'll actually call the update method on our basket, which is all done so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, we've put in the hard work to do that already. If we head over to our cart index then, this is where we need to output our form. So let's just pull this down a little bit and start to look at how we might build this out. So the first thing we need to do is uh, create our form. This is gonna have a specific action, but we'll leave that just for now. We'll build out the form design first. And we're gonna have a method here of post. So for the form then, we want a select. So basically just a drop down. We're gonna give the name quantity and we can get rid of the ID for now. And for this, we're gonna have a class of form control just so we have some bootstrap styling. And we can change this to an input small just so it's a little bit smaller. So we now have the following. So this will be a list of our quantities. And then next to this, we want an input type of submit and we want a value here of update. And then for the class of this, we're gonna go for a button and a button default and a button small, just so it's a little bit smaller. So um, as part of the actual form then, we can make this look a little bit better by just saying form inline and all that will do is that will pull them together. Of course, this is really small at the moment because it doesn't have anything in, but that's absolutely fine. So how do we work out what to display within this select? Well, obviously what we can do is create a default here for none. So we know that we can always choose none. That's always gonna be an option regardless of the quantity uh, that's in stock. We would just want to get rid of it. This will pass through when we actually eventually submit this, the value zero for quantity. And then of course, what that will do is delete it. So we need to loop through the, uh, from one, so having one item uh, within our uh, quantity here, to the maximum amount of stock. So remember we're already looping through our item. So all we need to do here is just create a for loop. So here we can say for num in one, and then we do two dots item dot stock. What that will do is it will count from one to the amount of stock. We can just end our four there. Now within this, we'll have an option. And then in here, we will have that particular number. And then in here, we'll have that number two. So now we end up with this. We have the maximum amount of stock for this Indian BBP berry. And if we increase this, so it should be this one here, you can see that we just end up with more st uh, selection options here. So you can obviously limit this if you want. Uh, it's entirely up to you what you do. Uh, you could maybe limit it to like five or 10, but either way, that's how we are rolling with this one. So what we also need to do is make sure that the item that's there currently selected is the one that we have the quantity for. So for the uh, selected, we can just do this selected. And what we want to do is an if statement here to check this. So 
if we just do an if statement here, we're going to say if the number that we're currently looping through equals the quantity of the item that we have, then in here, we'll just end this if here, we want to output selected equals selected. We don't need to do that. You can just do selected, but I'll go ahead and put that in there. So we know that we have two in, in quantity. If we add any more, this will increase. So we can test this by adding to the cart and we end up with three selected here. So now that we have this and we hit update, we're not actually going anywhere. So we need to post this through to a particular route. So the action then we can't really fill out yet because we don't have a route for update. So let's head over to our roots file and we'll go and update this now. So to do this, I guess we can just duplicate this line down. This is going to be a post to cart. It will be update and it will be slug, but we're not passing the quantity in the URL. And here we can just say update and we can set the name to cart.update, great. So now we can just go over and uh, add this in. So this is path four cart.update and we need to pass the slug in here. So slug is going to be item.slug. And now when we go ahead and hit this, uh, this goes through to our, our correct route. Uh, the method, uh, I spelled method wrong, so that's why it wasn't posting properly. But now you can see that post through and we see update as we uh, expected. So now we can actually uh, update the item quantity in here. Pretty straightforward. Uh, remember we have that try catch block. So we can literally just take this from here, but this time we're not adding an item, we are updating an item. So we're updating the product that we have here and the quantity is going to be from the request. I'm gonna get the quantity parameter. That's the parameter that we pick up from our form. So it's just called quantity. And then after this, remember if this exception is thrown, you can go ahead and redirect off to another page or you can flash a message. And then when they are redirected back to the car index, they'll see that flash message. And here we just want to say response with redirect. And then in here will be router. And then we are going to grab the path for the index of the car, just so we redirected when we change the quantity. So now, as long as our update method works, which I assume it will because we've used it uh, quite a few times, what we can now do is press two, for example, and hit update. And you can see that we now only have two. If we were to choose five, that goes up. And of course, all of our uh, subtotals and totals update as normal. So now last thing we want to test is whether none actually works. So we're passing through zero here. Remember when we hit update, this appears not to work. So it looks like it's uh, not working for some reason. Let's go over and figure out why this is. I have a feeling that what we're not doing is, if we go over to update, what we're not doing is hitting this just here. So to test this out, what we could do is die here and this should be removed. So we can just test that this works. So if we go over to here and maybe just add this item back in, so we now actually have uh, one item in our cart and we go to none and hit update, you can see that we don't see that die happening there. Now what is happening here? Well, we're passing through the quantity probably as a string and we were using strict type checking. So what we're doing is we're checking that it is an integer. There's a couple of ways around this. We could say if int quantity equals with three equals, or we can literally just say double equals. I don't think there's anything wrong with necessarily doing that. So now what we can do is let's just add in a couple more of these. So in fact, we can do that here now. So we can add four in. We're back to the state we were in, but now if we choose none and hit update, that then goes because now we're not checking that it's actually an integer. It's just being passed through as a string. So there we go. We now have no items in our cart. We can go shopping again. We can go ahead and add another item. We can increase the quantity. Of course, we can do this for multiple items as well. So if we want to go and add, uh, say, three of these, we can do so. If we decide we don't want any of them, we can go ahead and get rid of that specific one. And we're done. We're now updating items and removing items from our cart as we need.
I want to give a huge shout out to our friends at Braintree Payments for supporting CodeCourse. By next year, maybe even next week, there could be an entirely different way to pay. Maybe it will be the next Bitcoin, the next Apple Pay, or even both. Fortunately, Braintree's full stack payment platform is easily adaptable to whatever the future holds, so you can easily adapt too. Accept anything from pounds to PayPal to that next big innovation from any device with a really simple integration. And when that new payment method comes out, all you'll have to do is update a few lines of code. No late nights, no complicated recoding, no stress about staying ahead of the curve. Braintree Payments is here to help. Learn more at braintreepayments.com slash codecourse.